The new skyscraper on New York's skyline is a towering symbol of luxury and modern engineering. But just when it was nearing completion, disaster struck. This 60-story skyscraper started tilting. Engineers are now faced with an almost impossible task of fixing this skyscraper. The building isn't just a bit off, it is structurally unstable, and fixing it would cost even more than building it from scratch. So, why can't anyone seem to fix this leaning skyscraper? And what does this mean for New York's bold high-rise future? Before we start, please make sure to support our channel by clicking the like button and following us so you will not miss any updates on the latest mega projects. Located on Manhattan's eastern edge, near the Financial District, 161 Maiden Lane was designed as a high-end, 60-story residential tower with commanding views of the East River. Designed by Hill West Architects, the building was completed in September 2018. This building was not only set to be an aesthetically pleasing and sleek-looking structure, but was also going to provide luxury apartments in a prime location where the city meets the waterfront. However, the project had been facing countless issues from the very start. Originally envisioned as a landmark addition, this building led to high budgets and multiple design revisions. The structure that started from $41 million quickly escalated to $64 million as construction complexities occurred, forcing developers to arrange extra funding. The progress of this giant was plagued with design alterations and multiple lawsuits. This not only threatened the budget, but also the completion timeline. On top of that, a deadly accident in 2017 that took the life of a construction worker further slowed the progress, leaving the ambitious project in a state of uncertainty and eventual abandonment. New York City is famous for its skyscrapers, and one reason these massive buildings stand tall and stable is the city's reliable bedrock. Anchoring into this bedrock, typically made up of Manhattan schist, offers an ideal foundation, providing stability and allowing structures to withstand powerful forces such as wind or seismic activity. But 161 Maiden Lane is built on a site without direct access to bedrock. Instead, it sits on landfill, a mix of soil, sand, and debris, added centuries ago to extend the original shoreline into the East River. This softer, less stable base presents unique challenges for a tall building. Developers had two options, drill through the soft landfill down to bedrock, a costly and technically complex process, or opt for a budget-friendly solution. They chose the latter, employing a raft or mat foundation. In this method, a thick concrete slab spreads the structure's weight across a large area, reducing the pressure on any single spot. While cost-effective, this foundation type doesn't offer the same rigidity as direct bedrock anchoring, introducing a risk of uneven settling, especially given the building's slim profile and height. The engineers used an innovative technique of jet grouting in order to stabilize the softer soil. This technique involves injecting the cement slurry deep into the ground to create a solid layer which gives support to the mat foundation. While this technique saved the developers approximately $6 million, it gave way to new risks. The cement layer, though effective in strengthening the ground, didn't match the security of a bedrock foundation. Over time, soil compression and settling could cause uneven shifting, leading to tilting, a critical factor in 161 Maiden Lane's structural issues. As the construction on 161 Maiden Lane continued, the complications caused by the underlying landfill became increasingly evident. The unpredictable nature of this soil led to uneven settling, which was quite a risk when supporting a 60-story building. Minor variations in soil density could cause changes that, taken along with the weight of the building, had major structural consequences. For example, a minor change in soil density might seem negligible, but for a tall structure like this, even a small displacement can trigger significant stress on the foundation. Ultimately, the building learned about three inches to the north, which is about the width of a smartphone. The concrete mat tilts due to soil differences, causing uneven tension in the entire structure. This phenomenon is a classic example of differential settlement, 
It is vital to keep a close eye on any tilt because these changes can result in cracks and other structural flaws. Another complication that occurred was the tower's height-to-width ratio being 15.1. This ratio gave the structure a slim profile that makes it more vulnerable to lateral stresses, particularly from winds blowing off the East River. These winds combine with the foundation's flexibility to put more strain on the building's leaning side. The tilt can be exacerbated by the wind pushing against the higher, narrower structure, creating a hazardous balance that needs to be continuously monitored and possibly corrected to avoid more issues. One of the potential solutions for fixing the tilt for 161 Maiden Lane is underpinning which involves drilling additional support piles under the existing foundation to provide better stability. However, this method is full of logistic challenges and massive costs, especially for a building that is already partially constructed. The entire process requires detailed planning and execution, as workers must deal with heavy equipment in tight urban spaces while ensuring minimal disturbance to surrounding buildings. Engineers have tried using 150-foot-long rock anchors to provide stability in an effort to lessen the lean. Although these anchors can aid in protecting the structure from lateral stresses, they are extremely difficult to use in a foundation that has already shifted. The unevenness of the existing mat complicates the precise placement and effectiveness of the anchors, resulting in a stabilization effort that has not completely halted the tilting. This situation illustrates the precarious balancing act engineers must perform, attempting to reinforce a foundation that is already compromised. In order to encounter the sway of the building, the engineers have installed water-filled sloshing dampers at the upper floors. But how does installing these dampers fix the swaying? You see, these dampers are designed to absorb lateral movement, reducing the building's swaying during strong storms. However, while they fix the swaying problem, they do not address the underlying issue that stands still, the tilt itself. While the dampers do great against the sways, they need regular maintenance and adjustments to remain effective for longer periods of time. The financial burden of 161 Maiden Lane has escalated dramatically since its initial estimated cost of $64 million. Due to significant construction delays and costly repair attempts, the project has transformed into an abandoned ghost tower with construction currently on hold and the building's future uncertain. Compounding the financial strain are the ongoing legal battles between Fortis Property Group and their contractor Pizzarotti. Each party is engaged in a blame game, accusing the other of negligence and design flaws that have contributed to the building's instability. The marketability of 161 Maiden Lane has suffered greatly as a result of these problems. Developers have suffered significant financial losses because of unsold units caused by potential customers backing away. The building's future as a luxury property is in question due to the damage done to its reputation. 161 Maiden Lane's difficulties are like those of San Francisco's Millennium Tower which has also experienced tilt problems brought on by insufficient foundation support. The Millennium Tower's massive reinforcing operations, which included installing more pilings and a deep foundation system to stabilize the structure, demonstrate the difficulties and expenses associated with fixing such foundational collapse. However, New York has a distinct set of difficulties. The city's dense infrastructure and its location near water make fixing foundations a tricky job. When repairs are attempted, there is a real risk that they could destabilize nearby buildings or worsen settling issues. Rebuilding the foundation, or perhaps tearing it down and starting anew, are two potential solutions for 161 Maiden Lane. But it appears that neither the developers nor the local authorities are interested in going this way. Because the ground beneath the building is unstable, each suggested repair runs the danger of producing unanticipated outcomes. If repairs prove too costly, there is a chance the building could be left as an eyesore in the Manhattan skyline. Similar cases have resulted in structures becoming white elephants, where the cost of maintenance and repair far outweighs the benefits, leading to deterioration over time. As we wrap up our exploration of 161 Maiden Lane, it is clear that this skyscraper's journey is far from over. 
Will 161 Maiden Lane become a haunting reminder of what happens when ambition meets adversity in New York's skyline? Or could engineers unveil a revolutionary fix that breathes new life into this precarious skyscraper? The answer still remains uncertain. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.